Our kids are coming from all kinds of backgrounds, chaotic backgrounds, abusive backgrounds, neglectful backgrounds, where their environment wasn't safe. They have experienced things that I wish no one would ever experience. You can turn a blind eye and pretend like it's not happening, but it is. And without the kind of intervention that the settlement home provides, the trajectory of life for these kids is not good. Homelessness, incarceration, addiction. And we have a chance to, to prevent that and head that off. I can't think of anything more important. At the settlement home, we're able to address the needs of the girls at whatever stage they are in. They can come to us in the residential treatment center. We have foster care, adoption programs, and we have a transitional living program now. If they can't go to a public school, then they'll go to our charter school. When they do graduate, they get a diploma from the University of Texas, and they think that's really cool. My hope has always been that I can provide them that sense of growing roots somewhere so that they feel connected and they feel like somewhere is home and hopefully that this place, settlement home, is home to them and they know they can always come back. We're always gonna be there to help support them. That's something that they didn't get, I think, until they come to us. Our vision is to ultimately end the cycle of child abuse and I think it really does start with empowering an individual My name is Kenethia Fuller. I'm 14 years old. I was in three foster homes before I came here, and all of them were pretty bad. They just always yelled at me, always told me to do this, and then I don't know, they called me names too. I was kind of having trouble speaking up for myself in the past. I never said anything. Like if someone hurt my feelings or if someone was bullying me, I didn't never say anything never actually cared about my own feelings. We want to empower the kids. We want to give them a voice. It's because I think that um, when they come here, they're so beaten down, and they need to be able to stand up for themselves and to know that they're important and they matter, and their voice counts. So if you have someone to like, kind of talk to you about it, then they can give you like a second head on it so they can help you get through it. That kind of opened up to me and I was just like, oh, okay, I guess they're nice. So I opened up to them too. Just hearing their voice and not trying to sell them on something or convince them of, you know, that everything is just fine. Sometimes it's just sitting in the moment with them, sitting in their pain with them. Kind of feel connected to all of them. It's pretty cool. My name is Priscilla Mejorado. I'm 18. Oh, no, that's a lie. I'm 19. <laughs> My birth mom would move from house to house. She would go into prostitution just to make money. She would do drugs, and she would be around a guy that molested us, me and my sister. I think I've seen her life change dramatically. I think that staff did an excellent job of connecting with that kid and taking the time to make her feel safe and special, that she eventually started to trust in the relationship. I had a therapist named Jessica McKay. Her warm voice made me feel like she was like motherly. She just told me like how much potential I had and that she saw in my eyes that I was gonna do great things and she like motivated me. 
For children that come from traumatized backgrounds, they really take a little bit of time to learn to trust others. And sometimes that's six months, sometimes that's a year. But there does come a time when working with children where you get, sometimes it's really small, that moment of connection where you know, you, you're able to say to that child, I see you, and they say, I see you. And it's gold. I graduated high school, walked across the stage. It was really awesome. I work at a hotel called The Courtyard. Mondays and Wednesdays I go to ACC. It's giving me more motivation to like be self-independent and realize like what's coming when I move out of the apartments. I always kind of quote my mom in my head, and that's, you know, in healthy families, children are allowed to, you know, grow up and fly the nest. And then I tell myself, you know, the beauty is the day that they walk in my office to come brag on themselves and tell me, you know, where they are in life. And that happens really often. I'll always remember the settlement home. You know, like, pretty much raised me to become mature and an adult and you helped me like get out of the dark place I was in. It was my great escape. <laughs>was 17 when my mom died. She was always high a lot and she was drunk about 90% of the time. I can't hate her or be angry at her because she decided that she wanted, you know, to to hit me one day or she decided that she wanted to drink a lot or something like that. She'll always be my mom. I lived all around Texas. I lived in numerous foster homes. I had like a two week honeymoon phase just where I would just figure out, okay, what is it gonna to take to leave here in three months? And then I would do it because I just, I hated being in foster care. Then um, they introduced me to the settlement home. Every single thing that made me into an adult was because of this place. It was the settlement home that helped me find an apartment. They've helped me get jobs, helped me get into school. Each and every person that ever saw me was just all like, what can we do to help you get back on track? What can we do to help you go to that next level? It's just something about waking up and feeling like you haven't accomplished anything and feeling like you don't know where your next step is. And then you walk into someone's office and they give you a hug and they go, you know what, you did really great yesterday and you think that your world isn't falling apart anymore. Southern at Home made me realize that my world wasn't falling apart, that I'm actually doing all right. Oh. As a social worker in this field, you have to believe that the seeds that you plant will blossom even if you don't get to see it before your very eyes. Even some of the most difficult or challenging kids will get back in touch and say, I remember this staff member, or I remember this therapist, and that person made a difference in my life. I am Quenisha Warren. I am 35 years old, and I was in the settlement home back around 95 from the time I was 14 or 15. I have two sons, Akiba, he's 12, and Micah, he's nine and a half, he'd say and they are the light of my life. When I look at them, I, I see generations, you know, that are gonna benefit from, you know, the settlement home. They have stability, you know, they don't, they have love, they have all the things that matter, you know, so that's what makes a happy home. After years of sexual abuse, I'm grateful, you know, that I've been given awesome tools to just really not make the same mistakes with my kids and give them, you know, a normal childhood. You say to yourself, what I did made a difference and, sorry, <laughs> it's, it's impactful. We're parents to seven amazing kids. We really consider 
Settlement Home as the equivalent of family. We've done three full adoptions with Settlement Home. They've proven time and time again how they can support us. And they don't just support us, they love our kids. They recognize the signs of post-traumatic stress and they were able to, to fill in these gaps. I think someone was coming to our house weekly and I would go there for the kids therapies weekly as well. And so they really, really surrounded us and it was just, it was a wonderful thing. Yeah, when, when you first come into adoption, I think you have this idea of, wow, I'm gonna go do something great. I'm gonna adopt and we're gonna build a family and it's gonna be awesome. And that is, that's, a, that's the right attitude to have. But just as you're gonna provide a blessing to the, to the kids, they're gonna provide a blessing to you well beyond what you were probably ever expecting. Adoption is a, is a humbling privilege. It really is. The settlement home is totally possible because of the settlement club. 450 women who own this facility and operate it. The ladies that started out in 1916, 12 young women who got together and they started it all. And through the years, we've grown to take care of the kids in this community. They would be astounded at how many children have been helped through the years by what they started. The support and the love that comes to us from the Settlement Club women and that comes up to us from staff and kids. Well, who could ask for anything more? Isn't that what the heart longs for? And, and we found a place. <laughs>